What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Mic Check Podcast. This is T Word the People's Champ. Before we get into the video, I want to thank you all for subscribing and supporting the channel. We appreciate the feedback. We're well over 300 subscribers and we continue to grow. Now, I want to get that out of the way first before I discuss the topic of this video because I want to kind of pull some people by the collar and talk about the recent complaints that I've been coming across on social media and across the YouTube platform of people complaining about the boxing cards and the fights that we're actually getting. Um, in my opinion, I would say five out of every, well, four out of every five fights that are getting scheduled with the marquee fighters are actually pretty good. Um, I just want to review some of the, the upcoming card to just show you what we have coming up that I think are notable fights, whether they be for belts, for recognition, or just the marquee fighters getting busy in the sport. Let's look at, we got Benavidez Plant. We have Davis Garcia. We've got Stanionis Ortiz. We've got Fulton Inouye, and we've even got Haney and Loma coming up. And we could potentially have, within the next 60 to 90 days, Fury versus Usyk. Now, mixed in there, you're going to have Canelo versus Ryder. I, like many people, am not a big fan of this particular fight. It's a mandatory defense, so it is what it is. I can't really complain about somebody defending their belts. But I know from a quality standpoint, I think that there's better matchups out there. But we'll see if those fights happen down the line. You've got the winner, Benavidez Plant, potentially in line to fight Canelo Alvarez, either in the rematch or for the first time, Benavidez versus Canelo. So we'll see how that goes. But for what we actually have scheduled, for the most part, I've named six or seven fights that we're going to have that are really good. These are really competitive fights. Fury Usyk, if it ever gets signed, that's a damn good scrap. Um, if you look at, you know, the size and the boxing skills of Tyson Fury, kind of, you know, awkward for a big dude, you know, kind of agile for a big dude, surprisingly, um, against Usyk, who's a very fundamentally sound fighter, um, who does a lot of different things, uses angles. That's going to be a good fight, no matter who you think is going to win. Then you look at other fights like Haney and Loma. While I do believe that Loma has started to slip a little, I still believe that Haney is green enough for there to be some advantages from the experience standpoint for Loma to make it a good competitive fight. Though I do expect that Haney would do enough to show the judges that he's probably the better fighter that night. Fulton anyway, I got that 55-45. I mean, as you've been watching the videos I've been putting out week after week, you'll see that I'm kind of flip-flopping on where I want to go. But right now I got it 55-45 anyway. Um, Standing on this Ortiz will be the day before that fight. So that means back-to-back -back days, we're going to get damn good fights in one weekend. And then the week before, you got Davis and Garcia. That's going to be good boxing, man. We can't complain about this fight. Um, whether you think it's the battle of the belts don't matter, I don't care about that. I think it's two marquee fighters going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so I think it's going to be worth the time and investment. And as soon as that undercard comes out, it's going to determine if a lot of people purchase the pay-per-view. But a fight that has broken gate records already, it's important to boxing. And then before that, you've got Benavidez Plant, which is going to be a really good fight. Now, sandwiched in between their fight I didn't mention was... Um, Anthony Joshua returns to the ring against Jermaine Franklin. I think personally, because AJ is going to be working with a new trainer, there's going to be some hiccups and some eggshells broken along the way. Um, and Franklin is coming off a very good showing of himself against um, Dillian White. So I think personally, this is going to be a more competitive fight than people are talking about. So when you look at the landscape of boxing over the next, like, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks, we got some damn good fights. And guess what? We haven't mentioned Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, or or Jamel Charlo in there. So if it's if it's anybody that's thinking like, you know, it's got to be a PBC agenda for people to get behind it, it's not. These fights are across so many platforms. In fact, you've got two cross-platform fights. You've got Inouye and Fulton. That's cross-platform. You've got Garcia Davis, cross-platform. All I'm saying is, quit your bitching, man. We got some good fights on deck. Just enjoy the boxing. You can see it on the cover art. You can see it, you know, flashing across this video here and there. I'm definitely interested in everything boxing has to offer right up until the summer. And it looks like the summer might be lining up to be pretty good, too, depending on which screen, which stream you subscribe to. So in the meantime, enjoy the fights. Everything you can watch for free. Watch it for free. Everything that's on pay-per-view, buy what you like. But stop complaining. Just enjoy what we have in the market and just keep keeping up with boxing, man. Every bit of 
involvement that you have helps the sport to grow and keeps it around and keeps young individuals coming into the sport, which is going to be the talent of tomorrow. So this has been T-Word. I'm going to jump off my soapbox. This is a Mike Check Podcast. Until the next time, I'm out. Peace.